So uh, we are starting day two of Kaizen Congress. And uh, I have an opportunity to introduce my friend and colleague, Mr. Gopal Krishnan. Gopal is basically an electrical engineer. He has got 25 years of experience in corporate world. He has been practicing OE, TPM, whatever you call it, for many years. He was he is associated with Kaizen Institute. This is his second stage. So total seven years of his association. And he is one of the most knowledgeable consultant from our team. I am sure all of you will enjoy his session. And please feel free to ask any questions on any topic. He will be happy to respond to your queries. I am requesting Gopal San to take over. Gopal San, please. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> How many of you in this room have attended the sessions conducted by Mr. Grover yesterday? Quite a good number. Because most of the things may get repeated. You don't get bored of it. Okay. The ways of saying will be different. Uh, when it comes to like, talking about Expectations when you enter into this hall, okay, after this 90 minutes of session, what am I going to gain or what am I looking forward to share some random thoughts? Somebody said JV Kaizen. You, you guys can come forward. I'm a strict vegetarian. I don't eat people. Okay. Any, any random thoughts? Because after the 90 minute session, no? Anybody? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, it should not happen like that. Your expectations were on this side and I am totally taking you on the other side of it. I would like to align you with just like what we did yesterday. The Kaizen goal should align with the organizational goal. Same way, this session should be aligning with your expectations. That is the reason I am asking this question. We will try to match it. How to create an effective dashboard using the targets. And then, are we going to measure only the targets? Challenges. Challenges? Okay. I have never seen a challenge being reflected in a dashboard so far. Information, okay. KPIs, okay. And then, anything? Bottlenecks. Okay, there are random thoughts, but. There is no right or wrong answer to that. All that boils to much simple thing. Uh, most of you must be driving cars, and uh, what your dashboard gives you? Control. Is the dashboard giving you control by any chance? It gives me information. What sort of information does it give? Okay, it gives me a current state. Somebody else said something here. Snapshot of what? Okay. So, from these snapshots, what do we try to derive? Are we in? Are we in the right direction? Are, does it give direction? Now, okay, nowadays it has come all that all has come, but and other things. Where we are respected to targets. No, in the car dashboards, does it give something like that? Google Maps may be giving you that. The car dashboard, we were talking about the car dashboard. What the car dashboard specifically gives you? It gives you information about the vehicle that you are driving. It is not concerned about where you are going, from where have you started and all, but it gives you, if you follow these and these parameters within the limit, you can rely on this equipment for long. I am not, I'm ignoring the temperature, I'm driving the entire car in a second gear throughout, and the engine gets heated up, what will happen? I ignore this dashboard. The fuel, it says, the Kanban, it says now you have to replenish the fuel, but I ignore the signal, what will happen? What does it give them? 
the dashboard. It gives me some signal, it gives me some information so that I can take care of my whatever the wherewithal that I have got so that I can reach my goals, right? That's it. So three hour session is ended now. You're free. <laughs> so anybody wants to go for a Pune tour? Now, when I say about these dashboards, when I say about the dashboard, we are managing, trying to manage the business excellence. That is what the title says, right? So what do you mean by business excellence? <coughs> Everybody is talking business excellence, business, so I am also talking business excellence. What do you mean by business excellence? Some random term. Otherwise, you know, if I am only keep on, it's only really a monologue. The monologues are always boring. And there's a silent, people will do this. Is that business excellence? What are the criteria that designs the business excellence? Oh, be careful. <laughs> what are the criteria that designs business success? Okay, if I say, okay, by doing this and this, and there is business success. Follow the standard norms. This is the standard and norms. The thing is, at the end of the day, why are we into business? To make money, right? To make money, if you're not making money, you have the best of the standards in the world. If you're not making money, are you a business excellent company? So then, it's about delivering results. Results in the sense, what? Uh, okay. <laughs> One thing is money, that is the bottom line, or I would say the margins. What is the second one? You are saying something? Welfare of the employees, of course, you take care of your employees, then you will. But what are the criteria, the outcomes that we are going to do? to term it as a business excellence. How about growth? The company is doing profits, but it's not growing. Would you say it is a good company? Growth and profits have to go together. Or else, you cannot say that this particular organization is a business excellent organization. Are we up together? Just for the sake of it, don't say that. If you are differing, if you are bet to differ, you are always. You can always say that. It has to be an interactive session, otherwise. Yes. What do you come to? Operational excellence, when the moment I say operations, the administrative seems to say, oh, this is not for me. It's for the manufacturing team. Yes. Yeah, you. Yesterday, Janine explained the Kaizen business system, right? What did we say? There are two different tools that we have been focusing upon. Every organization, in the long term growth for the stakeholders, lower sum, what I've explained to you yesterday, last afternoon, what are the things that we look for? Yeah, I always say 80 20. You know what is the 80 20 rule? What is that? 80% of whatever shared in the closed room is forgotten in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the KBS system said about that, a long, creating a long-term value for the stakeholders. Do you remember that slide? So what were those? What were those values that they, they were trying to create for the stakeholders? Do you remember that? What are they? Profits. No. Nowhere it said profits. Growth. Right? It said about G. Is it that's it talk about cost? G Q. What does this Q script for? Quality. Then cost, delivery. Right? Respect. So why the growth is for the shareholders. I have invested some money, I have to get back some money. Growth is for the shareholders, right? Quality is for whom? The customers, if, if I do not take care of my customer, somebody else, right? And then, delivery is for who? Again for the customers, right? I have to take care of my customer. And if I have to ensure on-time delivery, what am I supposed to achieve? No. 
flow efficiency. You remember this word, flow efficiency. The KBS system, the pyramid, when it was shown yesterday, there's something called as flow efficiency, right? And then the cost part comes into picture, right? Market decides the price. I have to get some profits. If I have to ensure that I am getting this much of percentage of profits, what am I supposed to do? I have to limit my expenses or operational expenses, right? So, what is that we say? How do you ensure that cost cutting, right? Cost cutting at any cost. <laughs> we'll do that, right? Why have you not submitted your report? Some cost cutting is going on, so the papers were not bought, cartridges were not bought. We are not doing cost cutting here. What are we trying to do? We are not doing cost optimization, rather. We are trying to add value. We are trying, the process of trying to add value, the waste are getting eliminated by itself. Am I making sense? If you are differing to that, please express it. So, we talk about cost efficiency, resource efficiency. You remember this word? Do you remember this word or not? Yes. Okay, vaguely, it's a bit. It was the afternoon, after meals, I was going through this, so please excuse me. So we talked about resource efficiency. And who is going to give me this? Who is going to give me this? Huh? Employees. Employees, right? People. Right? So what am I doing for the people? That's what somebody said. The center of the block you have got something called as respect for people. Do you remember that? Yes. So respect for people. Because these are the people who are going to follow those processes on the game back. That gives me the result. What I say, the flow efficiency or resource efficiency. That gives me delivery on time and that gives me flow. I think they're all are connected. So this KPA system has two kinds of pillars. One, this one, addressing two aspects. One is sales growth. The other one is cost reduction. And you remember again, there were two tools. The QCD and the growth tools. How many of you still remember the QCD tools? Yes, the flow management, productive management, quality management, all those. And on the growth side, we have sales growth, we have innovation, right? And then you have the supply chain, follow up on the other side. And all of these are built on the foundation of what? The peasant change management. So, to answer your question, operational excellence is this. When I say operation, the moment people come to the paradigm of, oh, this is only for manufacturing, not for us. Whereas we need to focus on the other side of it also, on manufacturing APRs also. Kaizen is done on these APRs also. So that specific reason that we say, are we together? Now, we'll be talking about this business in terms. How can we define it? Trademark slogan of Shivkeda. Shivkeda is a management guru from India. He had a trademark slogan. What did he say? He is never said the winners don't do different things. They do things differently. And doing things differently is Kaizen. A simple definition of Kaizen is that doing things differently. Please do not come under the paradigm that Kaizen is a separate task. Already I have got so much of this and now that they are bringing in Kaizen, I have to do this also. Are they going to pay me extra? The first thing that strikes our mind. Please understand that Kaizen is not a separate task. My own routines, but done in a different way. That's why we call it as, that's what we say. They say,
It's all about doing things different. Are we together? Hmm? Now, how am I going to do this? this our subject is about the dashboards, right? Now. Yesterday we went through the cascading of the measures, what will matter, who will matter, when will be measured, all those things. I will be going through a few of them again. Don't get bored about that. Because now, why I have to? Why the hell I have to practice guys? Just because my boss said. Why we have to practice change for better? Without this, are we not changing? I'm just asking this question. See, this is how. The more the different answers when we give, we get something new to learn. Okay, to meet our core KP, you mean to say those organizations who are not practicing Kaizen or operational excellence or business are not making their targets? Are all the Kaizen practicing organizations are achieving their targets and above the targets? How many of you agree with this? To remove the waste. Are we doing Kaizen to remove the waste? This is a very interesting question. Please answer me this question. Is waste elimination is a result of practicing Kaizen or I am eliminating waste just because I am doing Kaizen? Which is the right statement? This is the right statement. Yes. Waste elimination is a byproduct of practicing Kaizen. I am not going hunting every morning, okay, where is the waste? Are you doing so? How many of you are doing it? Okay, 9 to 9, 15, I am going to hunt for waste now. Are you doing it? Someone says. They couldn't kill any of them. And they ran out of bullets. 
Japanese got pissed off. Oh, be good to enter the villa. So what to do? But the American said, buddy, don't worry. We have one more day. Tomorrow we are not going to kill any other anim animals but this big five. Please remember. Okay, let's go back to tent. This boat started walking back to tent. And suddenly, they heard a roar behind them. They turned around and said, lion sitting there. What will you do? Run, right? You have to run for your life. And obviously, these two guys started running like hell. After some time, the Japanese sat on a rock, took out his bag, and pulled out his jogging shoes and started to This American pissed off. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? This guy said, no, 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 I'm just changing to my jogging shoes. Do you mean to say that you're changing to jogging shoes? Are you going to run faster than the lion? The Japanese said, no, but I can run faster than you. <laughs> the moment lion takes care of you, I am safe. <laughs> are we together? So this jogging shoe keeps you one pace ahead of your competitor. Am I making sense? Yes. And Kaizen is that jogging shoe that keeps you one pace ahead of your competitor. Why I have to do business with things? Because today everything is same. In this world, everything is same. The only difference that I can make is by doing excellence practices. Excellence practices and create a difference in what you're going to make. So to survive in this competitive world or exponentially changing world, we are in a world of exponential changes. Am I making sense? If I have to survive, I have to practice. There's no other choice. It's no longer uh, survival of the fittest or something. Are we together? We are in the world of exponential changes. What we study in the first year of our graduation becomes obsolete by the time you complete your graduation. Right? And I always say that Indians have got the notorious characters. In the moment they start learning, they start learning. Do you all agree with me? Yes. What was the last time that you guys read a book? <laughs> Very few has got this happen. And whatever we study has nothing to do with what we are working Right? And if I do not develop my capability, how can I go and achieve this? So, to survive in this world, business excellence is very, very important. Am I making sense? So, the challenges that we have in the initial part of the century to achieve excellences, I am not going to Reproduce, you guys know in English, you can read it, you do it. And if you have got any other challenges apart from what it is mentioned here, you can share with me. We always say the self-learning cultures we do not have. <coughs> Yesterday we were talking about the circle economy, the development of the circle economy. Some of the challenges. Why I need to do this at the end of the day, if we do not know, then there is no point in having a dashboard just for the sake of it. Oh, the Kaizen guy said that I need to have, you know what is the visual everywhere? You can see papers on the walls. Just like a birthday party decoration. Is that visual? Are we talking about? So, what is excellence? Professor explained this yesterday. It is a moving goal. The goal just keeps changing. It is an ever-changing goal. But what is excellence? How do we define excellence? Some answer. Uh, because there are people who have developed the ability of sleeping with their eyes open. I don't know how many of you have got that. <laughs> Unless you guys react no? or interact, it's very difficult for me. How do we de de define excellence? Unachievable target, then it is gone. You are lost in the way. If you have decided this is unachievable, how can you start the journey then? Unattainable. Unattainable target, then it is not a smart target. Doing something better than necessary. Doing something better than necessary is a good definition. Is that enough? Doing, doing better than competitors, somebody said. You said? Yes. It is 
So what we are trying to say is there are different models that has explained about what is excellence. And yesterday, Grover would have explained about this balance scorecard and all of these. And everywhere, people focused on two things. What are they? Process and people. They focus only on process and people. So when it comes to that, it is a perennial quest for perfection in the processes that we use. And there is no such thing called as perfect process. Can you achieve perfection? Even God is not perfect. Otherwise, we would not have a be having all similar faces. Huh? Everybody would be Gopala. <laughs> right? The perfection can never be achieved, but we are in the journey pursuing perfection. You may not achieve perfection, but at the least you can reach excellence. Am I making sense? <coughs> this is the journey that we have started. I am going to do excellence. I am going to achieve excellence, if not perfection. Maybe 50 years down the line, 150 years down the line, but by that time, the goal would be something very different. You remember what was the time that Jesse Owens ran? How many of you still remember? Jesse Owens. It is India, man. Don't talk about anything other than cricket. For us, sports is cricket. Right? Let me ask the other question. Who, how many of you thought that Gavaskar's record would have been broken? How many of you would have thought that Amul Mazumdas' record would have been broken? Drew Pandur. Even in cricket, we know only very few people. People hardly know Amul Mazumdar and Drew Pandur. Like, like an accident, there is a different story. He broke all the records of Sachin Tendulkar when he was 16. Unfortunately, we lost him. Great player. So, this perfection is a moving goal. It will never be the same. What was yesterday is not going to be today. As we are saying, we are living in the world of exponential changes and your goal keeps changing every day. The expectations of the customer keeps changing every day. Loyalty is no longer there. The world of perform or perish. Give it. I'm going to continue with you. If you're not, please forget me. So, how do I define a perfect process? Sometimes we are not yet started into the dashboard thing yet. I've got 34 minutes left. Yes, you're saying something? There's nothing called as perfect process. There's nothing called as perfect process. But I said, how to define a perfect You can always define. There's nothing called a perfect but we can define. You are saying something? Stable. Stable, okay, to an extent. Zero wastage, somebody said. As I said, I told you, please, wastage elimination is a byproduct. We are not going to do waste elimination. Process which uh, produces desired result. Process which produces a desire. What is a desired result? Okay, if my market requires this and I have a desire of which will, which will fulfill expectations. Fulfill your expectations, right? So your expectations, if it is conservative enough, you are, are you excellent enough? Sustenance. Sustenance, like I said. Okay. It's all about a process in every step where it is valuable. <coughs> When you say, I'm, I'm adding value to this, what are we doing? At the end of the day, we are adding value in our geba. Am I right? We are adding value. The raw material are converted into something else. The information are translated into some other thing. The data is translated into information. We are adding value. So this is, my process should be valuable enough. Is my customer ready to pay for this particular step? And this is what we call it as flow management. When I do it flow, because why we are saying flow? The raw material should flow in your organization in such a way and reach your customer as fast as it can. That means my duration from paying to getting paid should be squeezed enough. Are you making sense? Because I am paying somebody else to buy raw material 
I am paying somebody to invest on my machine. I am paying for the power. I am paying for the labor. And then I add value, but it is not getting sold. My money is getting blocked. Yes or no? So the duration from paying to getting paid should be squeezed. For this, I have to enable a flow. The process should flow. Are we together? And when I say <coughs> adding value, because why the flow is getting blocked? The flow is getting blocked. The hurdles are raised. I have to add value by removing the non-value adding things. Are we together? There are two things. One is pure waste yeah. and one is necessary. So you yes. we, we eat, right? Yeah. If we eat, I always say the movement of hand from the plate to your mouth is a waste activity. So can you eliminate it directly eat it like a dog? <laughs> How many of you have tried it? <laughs> but have you seen a Japanese eating? Yeah. Keep, keep the ball cool. They have minimized this waste. So the pure waste has to be eliminated, the necessary waste has to be minimized. We need to know this. So I always say, 3C, we have to ask this question. When I say 3C, what is it? <coughs> Change in the shape or size or appearance. Whenever a product is subjected to a process, does it get changed in say size, shape or appearance? If all any of these three is happening, then it is a value adding. Imagine, I have got a thing here, I'm picking up here, and keeping. is it a value adding activity? But I pick it here, I put a sticker, is it a value adding activity? Because I'm changing the appearance. Now, the next to see is, does the customer accept it? Because I have changed the size and shape, but this size and shape is not acceptable to my customer. Is it a value adding activity? Scrap. Are we together? The third C is correct first. Whatever I do, right first time. If I am attempting the same process again, excess processing, reject, scrap, all sorts of Buddha comes in. Are we together? So if these three C, we need to ask and identify whether it is a pure waste or a necessary waste. Are we together? Some of them are necessary waste, we have to live with them. We have to live with this, but we have to minimize. So valuable is one thing. The second one is capable. Am I able to do? Am I? My capability is built to give a defect-free process. The total quality management comes in, right? CPK. All those things, no? all mathematics comes into picture to confuse people. <laughs> At the end of the day, what it wants is does this happen or require it or not? I have to develop a process, a capable process, in such a way that it doesn't give me any scrap or rejection. Are we together? Then comes available. My resources should be available the time I want. It can be equipment, it can be whatever you call it, my resources should be there. For this, we do TPM. Right? Total productive management. We do this. Then, I have the, all the resources adequate. The moment my boss gives me a target, I give, take out a big shopping list. Because I need 20 people, I need 13 computers, I want this, I want that, everything. It happens or not? The resource adequacy theory of constraints. Valuable is about lean or total flow management. Capable is all about total quality management. Available is I mean, available is all about TPM. And then adequacy is all about theory of constraints. And then the last one is <coughs> environmental friendly. The circular economy. We have to give it back to mother. We have been abusing mother for something. We have to give it back something. <clears throat> Not only reducing the waste, but recycling. 
realize it, minimize it, neutralize it. How to neutralize? That's what we saw yesterday, circular economy. Create value from waste. We had a guy, uh, what was this? The Shulam Show Challenge, the guy who started this. He said, Tati Mati. He developed from waste, he created value. Unfortunately, we forgot. Vindesh was part of it. He taught us how to convert these, how to have an economic toilets. Today we are saying Swachata, all these things. And his toilets used to consume one tenth of the water that what we use in Then today we have all Western toilets, right? One flush, nine liters of water down the line. Just to push it down, we are wasting nine liters once. Imagine how many times you are wasting the two. So creating value from the waste. And all of these should happen in such a tandem that you have to, should be flow. Everything should flow at the rate of pull, not at your own rate. At the rate of pull by the customer. And it has to be leveled enough. Not that the beginning of the month my manufacturing unit is sleeping and in the rest 15 days we are doing overtime to do the jobs. Yesterday we saw it, right? The overtime hours have been increased from 25 to 120. Please share with us. Why? We have got enough time, but still, because of this inconsistency, all of these have to be <coughs> Only when all of these happen in your organization, then you can say your processes are perfect. Are we together? Does it happen in your organization? And is your organization that goes monitoring these things? Production team always say metric tons produced. <coughs> the volume of production, is it your KPI? Because the customer wants you have produced it. Right? If the customer wants will you produce? What is the right KPI for the production team? If not production in numbers, or kgs, or liters, or number, whatever you call it. Out of time, in full delivery. That's it. Whenever my customer wants, wherever he wants, how much soever he wants, I have to give it. If I fail, I'm not a production team. If I have to give this, I have to have all of these. Do we all agree? Yes, yes sir. You had some question, this gentleman? Yes. You had some question? Okay, now, <clears throat> after so much of time, we have gone into the subject. Mm -hmm. So what is a dashboard? What is the dashboard? It's a visual status somebody said, it's an interface. It's an interface that tells you about, this is one picture of a dashboard. Right. It is an information tool. It is a tool that also shares information and also manages to an extent. How to make it more effective is what we are going to see in this another hundred minutes of it. You have to track what you are doing. Now, as he said, yesterday Mr. Grover was talking about a lady talking to you over Google Maps where to go, how to go, you damn it, there is a traffic jam, I have to take this route, all these things. And these dashboards should be in a position to tell you whether the route that you are taking is right or wrong. It should be visually, imagine, okay, you are all cricket fans, right? <coughs> imagine, how many of you have seen the cricket match live on the stadium? How many scoreboards did you see in the stadium? I did not watch scoreboard, right? I am going to there to enjoy cricket. Anybody said so? 
You had a scoreboard on every direction in the stadium. Is it or not? Those who have visited. No? Don't we have scoreboards on all directions? Imagine there are no scoreboards in a stadium. You are watching the match. It's a T20 match. The last over is being bowled. You don't know how much is the opponent's score. You don't know what is this guy's score. How many wickets left. Would you be enjoying the match? Then, same thing happens in your game bar. What is my target? What is my customer's demand? What I have produced so far? Is it in the right track? What is my current rate? What is my asking rate? Where I have to pull up? Where I have to buzz up? Does it come out from your dashboards? This is what we are talking about. We have to identify the right metrics to be measured and monitored visually so that anybody can Stand right? <clears throat> it's very simple. Why to have all sorts of Dhaka, Rama and Mahabharata? Nobody has got the time to go through it. All that you need is to have only 10 seconds to go through one sheet of graph. Not more than that. If you are taking more than 10 seconds to read a graph and trying to grab the information from it, then that means it is not a real visual standard that is maintained. Whatever that we are displaying, something like this, not more than 10 seconds. Okay, you don't say that, so I can't see this within 10 seconds. Okay. But what I can say is, everything is in green, that means I have to see it. Sense? I will come to that. I will come to that. This is only 5 KPS. Don't think that the entire thing is there. Only 5 KPS. <coughs> 3 to 5 KPS is not more than that. But it has to be cascaded to every tier. It should not happen that my MD is also chasing the same target. I am also chasing. My PA is also chasing the same thing. There's no point. Are we together? We have to cascade these KPIs. Yesterday we would have done this. Right? Cascade the KPIs needs to be done. But every tier should have three to five KPIs to chase or not. And what to measure? These are all driven by business questions. <coughs> and I say at a glance means 10 seconds, not more than that. One should not be reading out from this graph over oh, today we have achieved this much. No. If it is there and green, it should be there. <coughs> we will come to that. We will share. Something cannot be on the floor. You can't touch it. Let's go. When you are eating an elephant, take one bite at a time. And in lean, we always say small lumps. Don't go in big batches. Small lumps. <coughs> now, what is happening now? That should be explained. That is in daily Kaiser or tier meetings. I don't know how many of you are practicing daily kaizens. We call it as a natural teams. <coughs> how many natural teams are there in your organization? I okay. See, there is a thumb rule. What is the total strength of the employee? Okay, for three hundred eight natural teams is too less. Maybe I have to go through your uh, man managerial harmony. Or, you have to even include the casual employees. Okay, we will see to that. We will see. One is 
happening, what is happening shift to shift or cover to cover, that is monitored at cell levels, that is monitored at team levels. The manager should not be getting irritated going through that. He should be going through shift twice, right? He should be going through the shift twice. He should not be worried about the hover wise. The hover wise should be done by the cell leader or team leader or supervisor, whatever you call them, natural team leader. They should be tracking what is happening now. This guy, what is happening in every shift or every day or... And then there are some others. So there are three types of, we call it as operational dashboards, strategic dashboards, and analytic dashboards. Analytical dashboards, let us forget for some time because it is all the flood. It's the computer, the data analytics can give you all sorts of graphs and all those fancy things. Let us forget that for some moment. And we will focus only on operational dashboards and strategic dashboards. Are we going to measure the strategy every day? Right? Because every goal has got an interim goal. If I have to go from here to Mumbai, I need to define, oh, I have to get out of this Pune traffic by one hour. Okay. Touching the Ravet end by this time, and then by Tolnaka by this time. Like that, we need to have interim goals. First, chase the interim goal. Oh, don't chase Mumbai all the time. Chasing the interim goal. We may not know what's in store, whether there is a jam in the highway, or it is free. We do not know. We need to be prepared for that. Any unforeseen circumstances must be together. So never chase the strategy on a day-to-day -day basis. Chase the operational goal. That's why we are cascading the measures into tier levels. Am I making sense? So these are the three types of dashboard that we need to do, and most of mostly we will focus only on these two. This we will park it because it cannot be covered. Now, what is the objective of this? What is the objective of having a dashboard? Glance. Continuously improve. Continuously improve. Continuously improve. You said something? Quick glance. We glance what we will get some data. Does any other thing? Yeah, my performance against my target, and then control and monitoring. Yes, all the answers are. But if your dashboards are not developing the capability of your people, then the dashboard is useless. You can't use them in the toilets. You need a different type of thing. That is the reason in the natural team boards, we always have 3C sheet. If people are not listing out their problems and not solving the problems on a day-to-day -day basis, you will never achieve your strategy. People are not problems, people are problem solvers. And the very purpose of having this daily Kaizen meeting or this natural team meeting is to make them or develop them into problem solvers. They will develop and solve the problem because just be looking at, okay, yesterday I have not achieved it fine. Today I have not achieved it fine. Tomorrow I will not achieve it fine. What is fine in there? Why I have not achieved it? Unless I do some root cause analysis and take some corrective actions, these dashboards are useless. Am I making sense? No answers. <laughs> Am I boring? No. This is how we all stand, we all see, we all know yesterday we were supposed to do this much of number, we did not do it, okay boss, fine, you also know what the problem is, let's go. Are we going to have a meeting like that? This meeting is not about reading each other. This meeting is about doing analysis, developing myself, taking corrective actions. If I am not taking a corrective action, No need to have a color print out every day and have it on the natural thing. Go. Do it manually. That's the best way to do it. Have the graph sheets, plot it with the pencil. 
Because the problem with computers is you know, what the computer processes you do not know. The numbers have to get registered here. The asking rate and the required run rate and the current run rate should be known no, for the players. Yes or no? We have the players in game bar. We should know about it. If the computer processor is what's the point? Does it make sense? And then it also says whether are you in control of it or not. It tells you. It, it gives you some sort of a guidance that you are in control or that has taken your control. Gemba is in your control or you are at Rambal Hussein. That will be explained by these guys. So the objective is to first identify whether the Gemba is in control or not. Once the Gemba is in control, am I taking the right preventive or corrective measures to bring it back to the normal condition? There is a big gap between desired condition and the actual condition. How am I going to narrow down it? Unless it pops up from those dashboards. Those dashboards are not useful. Are we together? Now the benefits. Benefits everybody knows, right? You cannot go through. If this is not being done, that is the ultimate. Chasing the numbers, tracking, reviewing, all said and done, all are done for what? We have seen Hoshin Kanri yesterday, right? No? Yes. <laughs> How many remember the explanation of Ocean Country? That's a rough translation, right? Ho means path. Shin means needle. Khan is signal. Ri is logic. A logical signal given by the needle that gives you the path. Those days, we had the compass that always told you where the north direction is. Based on that, we identified the directions and we so the true north has to be identified by this Goshin Khan read. Right? And this alignment throughout the organization, everybody should be looking at the true north. It should not happen like, you know, have you seen the Navagraha's deities in the temples? And each of the idol will be looking in one direction. It should not be like that. All of us should be focused on this one. How am I going to go about it? At the end of the day, we are doing it for building a culture of continuous improvement. Right from the lower level, from the last tier of the organization onwards, we should do it. From gateman to chairman, as well as everybody, everywhere, every day. If it has to happen without this, without involving the people who are really adding value down there, it is not possible for us to have it together. Now, we were discussing about the business questions that drives or that fuels the dashboard. What to be shown in the dashboard? What are the business questions that we need to ask? This table gives you this, and who has to do what? Okay. Can you see this? What business problems am I trying to resolve? Who will be using it? At what frequency? And what are the goals? Who has to do it? Strategic and this is a table that we need to have it in mind before creating the dashboards. Is that okay? Am I making sense? I'm not going to this. This will be shared with you. Now, why we have to measure? Why we have to measure KPIs? 
What is that? We are measuring. We do not know where are we. Controlling. 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 Okay. See, unless you measure it, you will never know the value of it. Okay. Now I have a folded hand, and I say I have something in my hand or in my closed fist. What is it? Guess. People will start saying diamond ring, one fifty coin, whatever, a purse, or whatever, and then I give them. Sand. Unless I measure it, I do not know the value of it. So only when I measure it, I will improve. Because if I value it, I will try to improve. Right? What happened to Ethel? He didn't value it. That's why he lost his thumb. Nothing is free in this world. You have to pay something for whatever that you have learned. There is no free lunch. You have to value it. Why we are valuing it? Because once we value it, we will improve it, and that is the reason we are measuring it. So the first W is all about measuring it. Why we have to measure? I have to measure because I have to. I do not know until I measure. So that's what the Kaizen principle says. We always say, speak with data. My opinion is of no importance. The only thing of importance is the reality as you put it. The data, the facts from the game bar, we need to take it. So don't just take the rejection board ज़्यादा हो जाता है. How much ज़्यादा is ज़्यादा? I don't know. To speak with the data, right? That is the reason we are now. There are seven guiding rules for. Don't measure. See, have you ever seen a dog chasing a car? Hmm? You mean to say that you think that the dog can catch the car? Even if it catches, what the maximum it can do? Bark or piss on the wheels? What is it? Hmm? Nothing it could do, right? Similar to the dog, many of us are chasing meaningless. When we are measuring, we need to know is this goal really meaningful for me, for my organization? What am I trying to achieve by it? Whatever that I am going to measure, it should be customer oriented. We have seen the four aspect, four perspective in balance scorecard, right? What are they? Yesterday we have seen it. Did we see it? The financial perspective. Customer perspective, internal processes perspective, because the people are the one who are going to do the processes. So I have to develop the capability of the people. And once the processes are being done, are they being done in the right way? Is there any improvement needed? So I have to that. And these processes are going to give customers what they want: on time, full, error free delivery. And when it happens, I get the financial rewards. All these four are interrelated. Are you together? So my measurement should be always customer oriented. Don't chase only the results. Chase the processes also. Results KPIs, process KPIs are in HR language lagging and leading. <coughs> hmm? No individual. That we are not developing any star. It's the team performance. The team fails. It is the team that fails. It is not individual. No star we are creating. We are creating only teams. And all of that work should be focused on improvements. <coughs> Don't have historical date. You know what do you mean by historical date? What happened yesterday? Doing it today is historical. Can you change? Ye vakt rup ja, tham ja, kagar ja, apas zara toh aur piche. Can you go back and change it? You don't have a time machine, right? I'm not head jewels. Do it on a real-time basis. Real-time basis. Start monitoring, chasing on real-time basis. <coughs> Nothing in the computers. Make it transparent. 
make it visual. Anybody should be seeing something. It is not somebody else's domain. Everybody should be seeing. Then, <coughs> now, let's This yesterday you would have seen what to measure. You have seen it yesterday? The balance group not. We are supposed to measure the lean matrix, not any other. When I say lean matrix, what is it? Is OEE a measurement of lean? Just ask me. If I am producing to that, how OEE matters? If I am producing to that, does OE really matter? Think it over. Is it really lead measurement? What will happen at the maximum by maximizing the OEE? What are we achieving? <coughs> we are freeing the capacity. When I free the capacity, what will the machine do? Remain idle? When remain idle means waiting for orders. Waiting is a muda. So are we eliminating muda and adding muda? I'm just asking. We are finding out. Huh? We are finding out. What? We are finding out what? Muda. By by the Okay. Then what do you do then? You allow the machine to wait. <laughs> you glorify it. I have OE has gone up and now waiting muda has increased. Hmm? Doing it. No. In other words, how can we utilize these capacity to make some other points? Cell formation. When I have to create a cell formation, can I have this as a shared resources because it has got some free capacity? In a way, it indirectly helps, but not a direct measure. OEE is a TPM personally. So we need to identify because this OEE helps me in achieving my on time in full delivery. Am I making sense? Yes. If my availability is not on par, if my performance rate is not on par, can I give on time in full delivery? Okay, so on time in full delivery, if that is a result KPI, the process KPI is OE. And if for the next year, OE is the result KPI and the process KPIs are what? Availability rate, performance rate, quantity. If availability rate is the result KPI for the following year, what are the process KPIs? NTTR. And if I have to minimize my NTTR, that is my KPI, what am I supposed to do? Of course, analysis of the breakdown. So what we are trying to say here is, when you keep on cascading these KPIs by tier, by tier, by tier, at one particular level, you will reach to somewhere where it is not a metric, but it is only a task to be done. And these tasks form into a breakthrough kind of projects. Does it make sense? So this cascading needs to be done. So we need to find out the lean metrics to be done. Okay, what to measure? This is what. I always say, I have a big tummy. I have to reduce it. Every morning I get up and I measure it. Will it go down? That is the result KPI I am measuring. What am I supposed to do? I wish I had a girl like that <laughs> to motivate me to do the exercise, right? I have to do some exercise, abs for so many minutes, walking for so many minutes, this is the diet, so much of carbohydrates, limit to this. These are the process KPIs. If I do the process KPIs, this will go down or not? Yes or no? Yes. Another 15 minutes, whatever you say, I'm not going to leave you out. <laughs> you have to bear with me for 15 minutes. 
after that you are free to go to next sessions okay. thing is we have to measure both result kpis and process kpis are we together huh? so one question here. yes so you just talked about Defined. For our own organization, we need to create. Whether you would like to have 5 years or 60 years or 4 years, it is up to you. Based on the cells, that is why we always say all the cells will be natural teams. And then they will have tier 1 where all the cell leaders will come together and meet with the group leader. And then all the group leaders will have a meeting and they will be the production manager. Similarly, natural teams will be there for maintenance team, for quality team, for supply chain team, for innovation team, everything. <coughs> All of them will meet in the Kobea to discuss the details. Excuse me. Managers are obviously paid more, right? <laughs> so they should have a different KPIs than what the their peers are. Not at the peer level, from industry level, I'm like on a sales level, there are different KPIs. Every sale has got a different KPI based on their production plan or the customer demands. Their KPIs are different. So every sale will have a different KPI. We will show you some of the examples. You are about to ask something. So, that's what I'm saying. Cell levels, workstation level, and then you go to value stream level, and then you go to unit level. How many of you have value stream managers? Are we still functioning? Are we working in functions? I know A Raymond for those value streams. How about others? That's high tech. If we are really following Kaizen, follow value stream. That will be easy for us to track. It gives accountability to everyone. Now, otherwise, everything to, to, to production management. Production. Now, these are some of the requirements to do this. All this I will translate all of these into the measurements. Okay. We since we are running out of time, I will just. Yeah. Okay. This one? <coughs> it's all literature. So I'm not elaborating this. When you get it, you can read it. There's nothing much that I can elaborate on. And we have to, once we create a value stream organization, try starting value stream measures. Product-wise measures I use. Not functional-wise. No longer it will be a machine shop. No longer it will be maintenance department. No longer it will be quality department. In our home, in our kitchen, mother when she cooks, does she have a quality inspector to come, come and check whether the salt is right or not? Does she do? She checks herself, right? And then she corrects it, right? As an owner, as the producer, I should take the accountability of quality also. Why I need to have another guy? That is what we are trying to do. Okay, this is what we call it as. So some of the examples are something like this. Harley output. With respect to tag, if you are really working towards tag, measure it. My tag time is this, I'm measuring this. Hourly, am I really producing the tag? Hourly output. Then yield, quantity rate. Comes into picture. This is very, very important. When you are in an assembly cell, what is the WIP to standard WIP ratio? Have we created a standard WIP for each workstation? Because the cycle time between each workstations are different. If I have to have a standard level output from the cell, I need to have a standard WIP. Have we created it? And if you have created it, are we maintaining it? What is the ratio? That means the ratio. Okay, why measure that also? If you have a healthy That way it is the last. 
And then if it is sales team, sales per person. What is the value added per person? On time delivery, it is not about the metric tons that I am producing. What is the throughput time? When did the material arrive? When did it go? Am I producing to time? Throughput time is very, very important. Time to produce. First time right. Then product cost, account <coughs> receivables, account payables. The finance team cannot excuse them. They should also have a daily meeting. What are this week's payables? What are this week's receivables? Are they done or are they not? Yes. They have to correct it. They have to allocate the funds. Are we together? This is how the cascading is being done. This is for. Uh, Air services, okay. They are, you get a cutlery, right? Great. <coughs> when you go fly, when you fly, how to pack it? That is what. This is another way of cascading. Yeah. You cascade your measures tier by tier by tier, and then you go like this. Yes. of the day, it should align to your organizational goals, like you are from the hospital. Right now, the nurses are there in each ward. What is the throughput time? The patient is being cleared by the doctor. How quick she is going out of it? And how quick am I making the bed free? From the time I got the clearance from the doctor, from the time my next patient comes in, this changeover time, well, this is what we got. That I'm envisioning. Same way visually when I'm saying, how many beds are vacant? Where do we get to do? Are we doing it or not? This is every cell or every ward in your case, you have to have a KPI. That has to be done collectively. Like if it is in, the, in one single particular block, in the, the Chandaria block, we have got multiple wards. So each ward will have different, different KPIs. Because there are different teams of nurses working on them, sometimes doctors. Same way in pathology. How quick will it come and how quick will it go? What is the first time to do? What is the rejection? Sometimes patient's name is not there, number is not there. All those things we have. Yes? KRA. KRA, QRA, KRA. KRA doesn't matter. Performance indicator is very, very important. Which result area does it? At the end of the day, it's all going to help your organization. Don't get confused with the result area. Performance indicator is very, very important. And that is for the team. That is why you always have teams for individual Well, result area is my gamba. Forget about the KIs. Focus on result KPIs, focus on process KPIs. That will give you. And for this, because this result KPI, I mean the process KPI of higher tier will become result KPIs. Like that, you have to establish the chain. Then it becomes easy. This is another way. You have to link all these performance indicators to your performance management. The entire organization should be done like this. The measurements, how the goals are there, how the measurements are being made. You have to. It may not be so legibly clear even if you take a photograph. You might get this presentation. So you can go. This is another way of doing it, using post-its. This is done in a floricultural form. They have got multiple uh, crops. The organization has got a whole thing, and then they are divided into each of the crop, and each of the crop are divided into multiple blocks, and each of the block into different, different cells. In a floricultural form, where illiterate people are working. They have done this cascade. It's a corrective exercise, not that manager does it and he gives it to you, no. It's a service level agreement, that is what we talk about, right? We have to mutually accept it. Now, when to measure, we call it cadence. How many of you are aware of cadence? Did Glovasan cover this yesterday? Cadence? 
how how many of you feel cold or is comfortable imagine there has to be some sort of control measurement within this ac to maintain the temperature at 21 degrees is 26 degrees 26 degrees there has to be some sort of measurement some sort of arrangement what is that? when it goes to 27 immediately the compressor gets on and when it comes down to 25 the compressor stops this cycle keeps happening at what frequency does this check the temperature what frequency does it check on time yeah yeah on time on time what do you mean by on time <laughs> continuously can you do this continuous checking in your shop floor in your geba that's what we are saying cadence i give this refrigerator example okay today i told about ac fine if it monitors only once a day what will happen to this room either you will be sweating or you will be shivering right so how to do it thing is there is a logic behind it what is the time taken by you to correct the deviation should be equal to the time to monitor am i making sense if i take half a day to correct this deviation that has happened from the desired condition so i should be monitoring it once in half a day does it make sense boss All are sleeping. Four minutes no, more for tea, no, no. please. <laughs> huh? And does it make sense or not? Yes, we need to identify this kidans. Otherwise, we will be monitoring it every morning, <coughs> and people would have forgotten what happened. So four more changes have happened. I don't understand what happened. I don't remember. People don't remember today. They are flooded with so much of problem and information. It is very difficult. It cannot be. See, if it is more than you are losing, it becomes an historical data. It has to be equal. That's what we say. The lean measures are always the speed of system change and the speed of response to change. This should match. If there is a mismatch between these two, there is no point in having a dashboard and monitoring it. You will never correct yourself. The deviations will remain there, and at the end of the month. chase this uh, empty board every day or you going to chase your patients what i am trying to say is okay i may not be doing it every half an hour but what i can say i can have this can i do it every half hour or can i do it every two hours at least i can minimize the gap once i settle at this then the next step You, try, you can't take a leap from here to here. You can't make a jump. Anuman ji nee. We have to go. That's why I say, if you are eating an elephant, take one bite at a time. Go progressively. Have interim goals. First finish it, then go stabilize, then go stabilize. Don't try to make that will be one time wonder. Once the consultant's gone, everything back to normal. Remember the two take example giant gear is there. That will happen. Now, so who should measure? The guy who can solve the problem should measure. Simple. Okay. I have the problem. I have to solve it. So I will measure it. Who wants to improve? He will measure it. It's not that somebody else will measure it. Tell you, boss, this is wrong. You have to do this. But most of the time, it happens. We have a separate team for MIS. Who will tell you? No, you are going beyond. Now you come back, right? We, me, I am the one who is making it, so I have to measure it, and I will measure it at what frequency that I have decided. Are we together? 
And please understand, just by measuring itself, you are not going to control it. To an extent, it will bring it to it, but it is not the case. Identify the appropriate control measures. So, how to make these lean measurements work in an organization? Okay, just by having a dashboard, is it going to happen? Right? So, <clears throat> most of the time when we have these dashboards, what happens? Two, two men. You make iFix, this problem starts. And we need to have this no blame approach. Together, as a team, we have to solve it. That's why we say create a value stream organization rather than having a functional organization. When it is a value stream organization, the maintenance, quality, production, everybody is in a single team. <coughs> so you can't blame others. Right? Now, some of your question. This parabola curve, please remember, too much of information <coughs> is confusion. Less of information is confusion. You need to identify where I have to limit my information share. Having full walls full of paper and dashboards is not going to help you. That doesn't mean you're a visual management or a visual factory. <coughs> now, in India, it is quite easy. Take a printout from here, a airport printer. Do not speak here. <laughs> Some, anything, something we say visual. That is not true. We need to identify what, where are we in the curve? identify where your organization is in this curve. In this parabola, where are you with your dashboards? Identify that. Then start working. This is the Obeya room. Obeya room should have too many visuals, yes. But not everything. Obeya room is big room. Or in other words, cockpit. Some people call it war room. Why should be war? Right? That is fine. War is not a good term. Peace is fine. <coughs> Otherwise, literally, war room will be there. People fighting with each other. Because of you, this has happened. Because of you, this has happened. Production will blame BPC. You will blame maintenance. And all this blame game is done. So don't call it a war room. It is not a war room. It's a peace room. <coughs> This is <coughs> don't keep too much of information which is not relevant. Only relevant information is needed. These are some of the photographs of the aware rooms. Now the daily kaizen. How the daily kaizen? At natural teams, how do they do? Now for this time for tea? What's the time now? So we we'll break for tea now. You guys are bored enough. And if you're not adequately confused, you can ask me questions during tea time. Okay, and then we'll come back by what time? Eleven. Eleven? Okay, fine. Eleven. This one. Okay. Okay, then we'll break for tea and then come back by eleven. Okay. Thank you. We're having something like this. It is of three types. One is my team details. The second one is my performance for the day. And then my Gimba da or the other Kaiser that I have done. Something like that. It, it, it has to have these components. The team details means where is the factory my Gimba is located, how it is, how the layout is, how many equipment, who are all there, all those things will be mentioned. And this is the attendance sheet. There are three colors here. The colors are chosen. Okay, if you are present, I will have it green. If it is a planned leave, it will be yellow. And if it is unplanned leave, it will be red. The very purpose is the unplanned leave sometimes throws folks in your production team. So how to minimize it? Our people would have come. We'll go to it. Right? Most of the people would. So that is why we always say all these meetings should be standing meetings. 
Uh, we used to see an organization morning sharp 9.30, the meeting starts, and it will end by half past one. So they will directly go to lunch, and then by the time they come back, they don't know what happened in the game. So half a day is done. Then they, we decided, okay, we are losing too much of time in Gemba, let's have standing meeting. And then they started having a standing meeting, still the time when and the people started fainting. The very purpose, why? Because in meetings, we don't focus. We try to discuss how to solve the problems. There would be many experts who will be sharing their knowledge and wisdom how to solve the problem. To show how expert I am, how knowledgeable I am. Right? Does it happen? We start discussing about how to solve the problem. There in meetings, we are not supposed to do that. If we have found out some deviation, who will cut the deviation? By when it will be period. Go to the next thing. So this, this natural team here, it is all about the unplanned belief because if this guy doesn't come, how am I going to meet my customer demand? Can I have somebody fill in this gap? Yes? <coughs> somebody fill in this gap. If I have to know somebody to fill, who will fill in this gap? So that is why we have a skill matrix. Who is capable of doing what? <coughs> can he be an all rounder? Can he be a specialist spinner? Can he be a specialist batsman? Or you create a skill matrix. You are not going to stop with the just. Having created a skill matrix, I will also have a plan for developing the capabilities of the particular person. Okay, this guy, this skill matrix has got two columns. Um, <coughs> Skill 1, skill 2, skill 3, skill 4. And then operator 1, operator 2, operator 3, that is a rose. Now I rate, we always rate in 4. You know how to do this? 1 means is a novice. He knows the subject but he cannot do. <coughs> 2 means he can do but requires supervision. Someone has to follow up with him. Number 3, he can do alone. Are you through? Because if somebody having a meeting, it disturbs. Number three, he can do alone. Number four, he can also train others. Only the board knows the standard, follows the standards, adheres to the standard, and creates the standard. Not necessarily all the guys who are falling under three has to be four. I always give the example of Diego Maradona. How many of you know him? Right? Class player, but a pathetic coach. Not necessary that a better performer is a good supervisor. When you promote a better performer to a good supervisor, sometimes you fail both. You lose a good supervisor, you also lose a good performer. We need to identify this. Once I did this, let us say he is two here, he is four, he is something like this, and his total score is 30. This guy is something like this. This guy is four here, four here, one here. So his total score is he is nine, he is nine, he is eight, and he is seven. So what I will do, I'll see this guy is scoring less, and this skill is less. So I will train this guy in this skill. The very purpose of having a skill matrix is this. We are not going to just simply train somebody because the supervisor likes somebody's face. Oh, it's too big to train. We are not going to do like that. There is something called as business need and there is something called as individual needs. So the business need and individual need are classified like this. This skills we are lacking, so I will train this guy on this skill and this guy on this skill, so my score everywhere it becomes 10 and all around. I be together. So this plan should be here. And imagine we are not running an institute, we are not running an university. We are here to produce. So don't plan all the skills for all the members at all the time. You won't find time at all. Have to develop. You can also decide that this guy doesn't require to be trained on this. That is your choice. 
based on the business needs. Right? One person, one process, one quarter. This is the conclusion. Five periods. Are you together? Now, once we did this, with this skill, what is the performance that I'm getting? Whatever you choose, plan versus actual, on time delivery, OE, whichever you want, first time right. The KPIs, the teams should design that. Based on what we have seen earlier. What to measure, when to measure, why measure, who will measure. Are we together? Then, these are essential. If I got any customer complaints, it will become bread, otherwise, it will become. Every day I will be tracking that. Same ways here, in this safety, there will be a problem here. How many near misses? What is the mean time between accidents? How many of you measure this? Mean time between accidents. What was the last time I have an accident? How to make it? Near misses, right? So that will be measured here. And then, in this game now. There are some Kaizen, whatever the improvement that I have made here. Are we together? So this meeting should not be dragging more than 10 minutes time. Okay, that's my thing. That skill matters you are not going to do every day. Once a quarter you are going to do it, or once a month you will do it. And updating this board should be done even before the meeting starts. Have it together. And we are not going to share, oh, we did this number, that number, that thing. There is a target. There is an achievement. If it is meeting the target, it will be in green. If it is not, it will be in red. If it is in green, no further discussions. If it is in, because in India, traffic lights, right? Green means what? Go. Red? Only if you see a police. And if it is amber, you further speed up. Like in Luzana Gujarat. We have our own standards, right? Same way, there is a traffic light standard for these grams also. If it is green, you go ahead. If it is red, stop. Find out what's the difference. Why there is a gap? Who is going to bridge the gap? By when is going to put the gap? Put a 3C sheet. What is 3C? Concern. This is my concern. I have not achieved my target. That is my concern. And why? The cause for the concern is this. That is the second C. The third C is the counter measure. Fourth C is conforming it. Yes, this countermeasure is going to do this and going to get this result. Three C sheet. We have to fill it one with the temporary countermeasures and then with the permanent countermeasures. Most of the time, the temporary countermeasures remain permanent. Right? You are. You are this. You are calling. Fixed. So that has to be done in this three C sheet. Who will do, by when he will do, at what time? It should not take more than 10 minutes of your time. We are not going to discuss how am I going to solve the problem. We are just simply going to say who will solve the problem by when. And this is another way of measuring it. Within the natural team, you can track your hourly output or by hourly output. That can be done once a shift. Can do however you are by This is a 3C sheet. We are talking about the cost, concern, cost, countermeasures. Countermeasures are two types temporary countermeasures and then root cause countermeasures. Who will do by when completed or not completed? Right? Then, Kubeya. We saw Obeya, right? Obeya means big room, Kubeya means small room. Obeya is for the whole organization. Kubaya can be for the functions, or can be for the value streams. Similar pattern, who are all the members? What is my roadmap? The competitor here, we are not talking about the skills. The we are all managers. We will talk about, there are three types of people in every organization, you know that. There are people who make things happen. They are called value adders. There are people who see things happen. They are called Cell leaders or supervisors. And there are people who wonder what happened. And they are called managers. So the managers should have a competency matrix to wonder what has happened. So this competent this is not skill matrix, this is a competency matrix for all the managers. 
what competency do I possess? Because if a leader doesn't have a self-development plan, he cannot be a good leader. We have seen in the morning that we are all living in the world of exponential changes. So I have to keep on upgrading my capability. If I stop, the moment I stop learning, I'm stuck. So we need to develop our <coughs> capability. Maybe the performances and the control measures. That is okay. Now this is another way. If we could see that there are red, there are some greens here. This is the steering committee. This steering committee is all about the committee that steers how my Kaizen initiatives are. This is different from OBEA. Please understand. OBEA is about the organizational progress. Steering committee is all about the progress of Kaizen initiatives or continuous improvement initiatives in your organization. The ultimate aim is the OBEA and the steering committee meeting board should be the same. That is our ultimate aim. That will happen when we are reaching sprint four. But till the time, we need to have this circuit. Let me together. So in this, I will have the roadmap of the Kaizen initiatives, where I am, my Kaizen health scores, my research KPIs, and my process KPIs. Across the, let me together. This is another way of display, which are all linked to what? It is shown here. And then the breakthrough Kaizen projects are listed. Okay. So this is the accountability board. Each one of us, as managers, we cannot have three C sheets now. We will have an accountability board, and there will be task cards against you. And this task card can have only one default date. Second coming, not third coming. Tarik pe tarik, ni chale na. Are together? And. You can have this Kamishi bypass, guys, for audits. This can be used for audits also. This can be used for achievement also. Kamishi by means storytelling. So same card, which has got all the details. It all started from maintenance, from TPM, right? Periodic, time-based maintenance. People should do. There will be Kanban's put into that. And when they advocate what I'm supposed to do, will be written there. And if it is done on the right day, you have a green. If it is not done, it will have the red. On both sides of the card, you will have the same thing printed on. And then you can have another 3C board for this Kamishi board also. There is another way. This is how a Kamishi board would look like. Shift, day shift, and night shift. Okay, in Kenya, there are only two shifts. That's why we have put it like that. In India, we are working with three shifts, so you can have. This one, ah, this. Yes. We have identified the desired condition, and there's a deviation from expectation. Who is going to bridge this gap? So, among the managers, somebody will take the responsibility. I take. It's not the responsibility. I, I take the accountability of solving or resolving this issue by this and this date. So, this task card will be here. There is again we are using some color codes. Each card has got different. In that task card, it will be mentioned, this, and it will be put against this guy's face, and whatever the date he comes. So till the time I'm not going to, but on that particular day, I'll ask him, you committed on this date, have you done it or not? Maybe for genuine reasons I have not done it, so second commitment you can take. But you haven't come. That is why we say accountability. Okay. <coughs> These are some of the ways a project. <coughs> how to schedule it, how to finish it, and then master plan. All of these on a real time basis you can have. OBEA can be have for innovation also. The project is very, very important. Time to market, that is what you always say. So this way, this is another OBEA room. This is OBEA room of Kaizen Institute. And these are all some of the photographs that I have. never have so many people sitting around there, they will never have that That's why we always say that even in natural team we have a, what is the strength of a football team or a cricket team? So don't have another than that. Because it is, you know, there will be people who are watching from the shores, enjoying the waves. They will never jump into the sea. No. 
don't want to have pearls jump into this. Right? So with this I come to the end of this and we go to the